Good evening. This is Watch It Baptist Church Online. Thank you for joining us. The service will start in a little bit. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that you're very welcome. Please feel free to engage as much or as little as you're comfortable. We would love to hear from you. So if you are feeling brave enough to pop a little line or two in the comments box to say who you are and where you are and who you're with, uh, then please do that. If at any point you want to chip in with something, uh, like a prayer request, uh, then please feel free to do that too. Keep an eye out for who else has signed in and feel free to greet them by name. through our countdown now to the start of the service. My name's Mike, I'm the pastor at Watch It Baptist Church and the service is hosted from outdoors uh, as much as possible at the moment. I've taken uh, the opportunity to be out here doing my exercise uh, for today and I'm filming for the service tonight. Do keep checking in with one another and we'll be starting shortly. The 
closer now to the service starting. At Watchit Baptist Church we're a community of people who trust Jesus and who love one another and love him too and we accept that Jesus has good cause to give us shape to our lives, to encourage us to go and be in particular ways and places. We hope that that's something that you can connect with whether you know Jesus for yourself or not and if you're just exploring we'd be happy to make you feel as welcome as possible. The service will start in a few moments. Please feel free to grab a hot drink or a biscuit or even if it comes to it to have your dinner on your lap. That's okay. We want you to feel as comfortable as possible as we spend time together and with Jesus who is our brother and our king. lost, wandering in darkness, no life in sight, no hope in sight, but he called my name, and he healed my blindness, set me ablaze, now I'm alive with, that's right, his love breaking through my heart of stone, love breathing to awake my bones, love reaching out to save my soul, love never 
Good evening and welcome to Fairyland. It's not really Fairyland, but when I first came across this place, that is how it felt to me. It was a sunny, uh, su late summer's afternoon and I was out walking. I've never been to this part of the world before and I found this incredible place with all dappled sunshine and running water and it felt like a fairy might just jump out at any moment and land on my nose. In actual fact, I'm some way up Hodder's Coombe, a little way from Holford. Uh, I've used my chance to get out and exercise today to come out and uh, do some filming for the service and here we are. It's Sunday evening, uh, it's around about six o'clock and this is Watch It Baptist Church Online. During our service this evening we've got a guest uh, coming to talk to us from Luke 4. Uh, we've got prayers as well and we've got readings. We've got the chance just to spend some time in each other's company and enjoying God's presence too. I recognise that as we uh, continue through lockdown too, that these are not easy days, but there are reasons to be joyful, not least that we are part of a family with Jesus and with one another, that we have the assurance of his saving grace with us, that he has given each other to us, that we might be encouragers of each other, reminding each other of God's goodness and standing with each other in those times of pain and anguish and sorrow rather than pretending that they're not there which is never the right thing to do let's bring God into all that we are all that has happened this week and let's enjoy this incredible setting since I've been here uh, there have been a couple of gusts of wind that have just brought torrents of leaves down around me 
autumn is in full effect and although the trees aren't as green as when I first came it is beautiful here nonetheless. We're going to begin with a call to worship from Psalm 104. Hello everyone. Today's call to worship is from Psalm 104 verses 1 to 5 and verses 31 to 35. So starting at verse 1. Praise the Lord my soul. Lord my God you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. And verse 31 to 35. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we begin our time together, we're going to sing in worship. We're going to tell the story of who Christ is and sing together in Christ alone.
we stand together in Christ, in his name and under his protection and mercy. And praise God for that. Just a couple of notices to bring to your attention. They are all about prayer. We are in a season of prayer at the moment as a church. And for those of us who are regulars around Watchit Baptist Church, you'll know that there are a few sort of prompts and questions that we have been looking at together as we've been spending time in prayer through this autumn. So from tomorrow, Monday, we begin a week of particularly focused prayer times. If you're part of the church, my hope is that you have by now received a schedule of what's going on through the week. There will be uh, prayer activities happening uh, via online channels right the way through the week and you are all invited to be a part of those. If you uh, aren't normally uh, a Zoom person, perhaps this is the time to jump in and try that out. Uh, a lot of the things that we're doing will be fairly short and uh, we don't want people to be burned out on Zoom but there will be opportunities and if you don't have the link for Zoom please do get hold of me and I'll provide it to you. Also a reminder uh, about prayer huddles. If you are in one, brilliant. Please be aware that through this focus week of prayer, it's up to you whether you meet as normal or whether you pause those huddles, uh, regular meetings, so that you might engage with what we're doing through the week. Either is absolutely fine. If you're not part of a huddle, it's not too late. The, uh, the door is still open for you to create one, even if it only meets once or twice as we continue to seek after God's voice and hear what he's saying to us. Please also look out for our new prayer diary. The aim is that this will be hopefully weekly and that this will help shape the way in which we pray uh, week by week. And finally, just to let you know that it, over the course of the next few weeks, I'll be looking to you to help me publicise Christmas events. Okay then, okay, then. Uh, we're going to move on into a time of prayer in a moment. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to sing again. We're going to sing King of Kings. Thank you. 
we're going to spend some time in prayer now and Sharon is going to be leading our prayer time. Over to you, Sharon. After reading the letter that Mike received from a family visiting Watchard, they said that they felt our witness shining out in this area. And although they had not been able to meet with us, they still felt our presence as a church in Watchard. I don't know about you, but I felt thrilled to hear that, to realise that our presence is all in Watchard. It encouraged me to actually want to reach out to people and just because we can't physically go out and meet people, we can still make a difference in people's lives. I'd like us to pray for opportunity, for courage to step out of our comfort zone and for God to give us a clear vision in areas where we can make a difference in people's lives and in our community. Let us not let closed doors, lockdown, stop us from reaching out to others. Dear Lord, please help us to step out of our comfort zone. Please show us where you want us to go and how to open doors in situations that seem to be impossible to get through. Just pray for a few minutes. Secondly, I'd like us to spend time with God, quietly giving thanks to God for all that we have, to still our minds from the busyness of life and meet with God, to ask to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I thank you for what you have done for us on the cross. Thank you that because of you, I have the hope of eternity. Thank you that you conquered the grave and that you are alive today. Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let's pray for a few minutes.
I'd like to just finish with Jude 11 verse 25. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer and Dorothy is going to lead us in that. The Lord's Prayer from the New International Version. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. We're going to sing again and our young people will lead us in living hope.
Amen. This time last autumn we were talking uh, about being red dots. I don't know if you remember it uh, and obviously if you weren't part of our gatherings at that point this is completely new to you but we were talking about the idea of being red dots. That is to say uh, the individual in our community, in our circumstances that knows Jesus and wants to sort of extend that knowledge, to, to bleed out that redness into those around us. We used uh, a, a drinks coaster which had a series of red dots on it. Um, we had postcards that talked about who we were. We had little pieces of red glass, little tiny things too. And there were other ways in which we talked about being that red dot and it was about being on our front line. Recognising that where we are is part of who we are and is part of what God is calling us to do. Now this year has been perhaps the most challenging when it comes to recognising how we can influence, uh, how we can serve, how we can be red dots, light in the darkness if you like. And yet the opportunities are still there. I was in a meeting this week with Gavin Calver who leads the Evangelical Alliance and one of the things that he was saying was that as we've, as we've discovered going into lockdown to be challenging, what we found out is the things that were strong already as we went in have got stronger. And the things that were weak have been shown to be weaker. Our presence in our community, our, our, uh, our influence where we are is crucial at this time and will go on being important as the post-Covid world starts to emerge over the months to come. The reality is that our communities, and I say communities because even among the folks that watch at Baptist Church, there's more than one community represented. Our communities need Jesus and the hope he brings, the assurance he provides, more than ever. Now Jesus isn't just about hope and assurance, he's also about a rescue. He's about forgiveness and new life. He's about being honest with ourselves about our limitations and the ways in which we need to be transformed as people, which the Holy Spirit can help us to do, as long as we are intending to make that journey with Jesus. But the red dot thing remains really important. And it's crucial that even in the middle of lockdown too, that we are thinking really carefully about the kinds of people we can be in our communities, about the ways in which God has already given us a place where we can serve him and share good news. We are put in positions, in positions of location and influence. God hasn't left us anywhere by accident. And there's a real opportunity to recognise where God has placed us and to be looking at what he's already doing through us and then to invest further in those opportunities. I was in conversation as well this week with Ali Fulford at Ilfracombe. Some of you may remember she's the pioneer, sort of missioner based out of Ilfracombe Baptist Church who we have helped support. And she was talking about how crucial she feels it is that she 
is in the places that she is in and how good God is at enabling her to be effective for his kingdom because of where she's placed. She's much less bothered about the programs that the church might run. They may well be helpful, but that's not the thing that gets her excited. What gets her excited is knowing that God has put her somewhere and made her who she is, and that is enough. She does need to keep investing in how she is presenting the kingdom and how she is sharing good news and how she is living out hope and new life in those places. And at the minute, a lot of that is to do with being online and that's really challenging for lots of us. And yet, God is not phased by our onlineness. He is not caught out by our current circumstances. He is not surprised by how we've ended up being where we are now. So if you find somewhere in your home that coaster with the red dot on it or the postcard that says who you are or the little piece of round red glass, get hold of it. Take hold of it again. Remind yourself that God has put you where you are and is already empowering and enabling you to be his good news where you are. And if you want to talk more about how you live that out, let's have that conversation. Maybe if you're in a prayer huddle, that's something that you might pray about with the others you're praying. Maybe it's something that we make part of how we pray in this week of prayer to come. Maybe it's part of how you invest in how you read the Bible. That you say, if I'm going to be a red dot, what does this bit of scripture tell me about being effective where I am? What does it tell me about what God's already given me to make me his person where I am? We just take a few moments uh, to just a, just a few seconds to pray and then we're going to move on and hear greetings from a couple of folks. Let's pray. Almighty Father, you don't really do accidents and we praise you that you have purpose and intention and you put us where we are so that we can be effective for your kingdom. We thank you that you invite us to be part of the best way of living that there will ever be. We pray that you put people in our path tomorrow and all this week and next month and all the way to Christmas and beyond, that you provide people in our lives to whom we can be Jesus, showing love and care, affection and fondness, forgiveness, kindness, but also telling people that Jesus is brilliant, that the King has already come. Would you enable us and empower us to be all those things and would you help us ask for help from you and from one another to be those red dots where we are. Gracious God, merciful Father, give us your spirit and power that we might be your people in your places for the sake of your glory and your kingdom. Amen. Okay, we're going to hear from a couple of pastors around the patch uh, who are going to tell us a little bit about what they're up to, uh, but mostly they're just going to greet us. Uh, Hi, my name's Hannah Freeland and I'm the Minister of Who Baptist Church, which is part of the Plymouth and District Cluster of Baptist Churches here in the South West. It's an honour to send you greetings from our fellowship and to pray for you in Watch It. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Watch It Baptist Church and how they have a heart for you and their community. As they seek you in these unusual times, I pray that they will certainly know your love, protection and peace. By your spirit, draw them closer in unity and strengthen their bonds of love and care. And may this be a strong witness in their community and may that overflow into the streets and surrounding villages of Watch It. Lord, as we look to the future, I pray that you will inspire the fellowship of Watch It Baptist Church with new and clear vision in how you are calling them to be your people in every sphere of their lives. Give Mike and the leadership team godly wisdom and insight as they seek to lead, equip and empower your people so that your kingdom will come in the life of the church and in the community. May many lives be touched, renewed and restored with your love, justice and peace. And so a final blessing, I pray on all the people of Watch It Baptist Church. 
the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Hello there, it's David Beasley from beautiful Saint Hill, uh, near Colompton, between Blackburn and Kentispear, Mid-Devon. And you can see our little chapel behind, but no doubt like yours, it's a bit neglected at the moment because folks can't meet together. But uh, apart from that, um, we bring you greetings to Mike and to you as a church family. And we continue to ask God's blessing on all of us in every church and tradition at the moment when we can't meet together because of lockdown and so forth. But God is good and uh, we pray that he will hold us together through this time. So I bring you greetings from my folks to your folks and uh, well they say I preach with a view every day, every Sunday uh, and you can see by God's grace we live in a most wonderful place. We don't have a view of the sea like you do but what we have is precious. So let's pray together and ask for God's blessing. Father we thank you for the beautiful area that we live in for life itself and the freedom to enjoy the beauties of autumn and the works of your grace. And Father, we do pray that you'd watch over us through these difficult times. And Lord, we ask that we may learn something special out of these times that we wouldn't learn in some other way about your love, your grace, your closeness, your provision and the hope that we have in you. And so we humbly ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless you, and uh, good to be in touch. Bye for now. Okay, let's sing again together before we have our reading, and we're going to sing Let Your Light Shine. moments. Eleanor Moffat from Chudley Baptist Church is going to be bringing uh, some thoughts on God's Word from Luke 4. But before that we're going to have the passage read to us by Rachel. It's Luke 4 verses 14 to 21. Over to you Rachel. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. 
Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for the sight of the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So we're going to hand over to Eleanor now, who's going to uh, be speaking to us about that passage from Luke 4. Let's pray for Eleanor now. Father God, we thank you for Eleanor, for the ways in which she serves you and longs to hear from you and to share your goodness and your promise and your instruction with us. Would you guide her and bless her in all that she says and would you keep our minds soft, our hearts ready for you to speak in ways that transform who we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Eleanor. Good morning. I am delighted this morning to be with you and to share a few thoughts with you about this passage from Luke's Gospel, from Luke chapter 4. It reads a bit like an inauguration speech, which is kind of appropriate as uh, we've been watching over the pond in America as they've been uh, going through all the, the ramifications of, a, of an election. And, and now we're awaiting the official result. And we know at some point in the not too distant future, one person will be giving an inauguration speech before they enter the White House. Inauguration speeches um, come at the start of a leadership, at the start of a period when um, you take charge and you're going to make changes and uh, lead your country. That's the idea of them. So I thought we'd start today with just having a look at a couple of inauguration speeches. And I wonder if you can guess who has made these speeches in the past. The first one comes from uh, 1994, which is a bit of a clue. And some of the words are these. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. We have triumphed in the effort to implant hope in the breasts of millions of our people. A rainbow nation at peace with itself and the world. Many of you will have guessed those are the words of Nelson Mandela in South Africa as he took up leadership there. Um, and slightly more recently, um, in 2009, somebody said these words at his inauguration speech. On this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear, unity of purpose over conflict and discord. On this day, we come to proclaim the end to the petty grievances and false promises, the recriminations and worn out dogmas that for too long have strangled our politics. Brave words from Barack Obama. Now, with inauguration speeches, you get a bit of a flavour of the person or at least of the persona that they are presenting. Um, and you get a little bit of an insight into where their leadership is aimed, what they're hoping to achieve, where they're going in their, in their aspirations for their nation and for the people that they're going to be leading. But actually, time will tell. History, as it rolls forward, will show whether those were empty hopes and promises, whether that character, whether that persona that was presented right at the start, whether that was uh, a persona that was um, one of integrity. Did they live up to who they presented themselves to be? Did they actually fulfil what they hoped for? Maybe they weren't able to fulfill it for other circumstances, but did they continue to live and to push and to fight and to work towards those same goals? History judges people and judges their words. And so inauguration speeches are part of the story, but by no means the whole thing. So here in Luke's gospel, we have something of an inauguration speech from Jesus. It's sort of its first uh, a recorded uh, sermon in public. But Luke is at pains to show us right from the start that this is not just uh, a man speaking out of his own sense of rightness or um, justification or his own sense of calling, but that this is something of God's spirit working in Jesus. 
So the context of this, uh, this Sabbath day in Nazareth is that it comes after the, um, the baptism of Jesus, at which we heard the words of God, the Father speaking approval of his son and seeing a vision of the Holy Spirit as a bird um, above that whole scene. So we see the Holy Spirit there in his baptism. And then we know that the Spirit takes him out into the wilderness where he's tempted and overcomes in the power of the Spirit. And then we read here at the start of Luke 4 that he is now travelling around and preaching. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. There you go. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. And he taught in their synagogues and, and people were really impressed by his teaching. And so we need to recognise that when Jesus opens the scroll here in Nazareth and starts reading these words from Isaiah, familiar to his hearers, no doubt, yet he speaks words that are true for him too. And Luke has already laid the way that this is somebody who's speaking with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. So then he does say, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Those are the words from Isaiah 61 that Jesus begins as he reads a portion of scripture. Now, we need to recognise also who Jesus is at this point. It's relatively early on in the Gospels. So we don't know much, but the very fact that the synagogue attendant has invited him to speak means that he was recognised as a scholar, as somebody whose teaching was authoritative, was worth hearing, that he had wisdom and insight to bring as he commented upon scripture and, and, and gave um, insight and, and application to the scriptures that he would read. Not everybody was invited to speak. Not everybody was invited to read, but Jesus was invited to come to read the scripture and then to comment upon it. And one of the traditions of rabbinical, um, uh, the role of the rabbi in, in reading scripture was that they were permitted to take texts and to weave them together, to perhaps edit them slightly, leave out bits and, and add in other bits from scripture. Very few ever did this. However, Jesus seems to be so confident in his understanding and his insight into scripture that he does this. He's said to be reading from Isaiah 61. But if you were to look at the Luke record, the, the recording in Luke of his words that he reads and Isaiah 61, you notice there are some discrepancies. Jesus doesn't simply read those verses from the beginning of um, Isaiah 61. He leaves out certain things. He adds in something and he stops short of the end of that passage. And there may be some significance in that for us. But Jesus starts out with these, this great passage from 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He's sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, it says in Isaiah. But Jesus misses that bit out. And instead, Jesus says he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now, why does he leave out the brokenhearted? I don't know. I've been pondering this. And if you look at the life and the ministry of Jesus, you know that is exactly what he did so often in his healings. He didn't just heal the body. He restored the person, um, brought shalom and wholeness to them and restored them to their place in society. There was a lot of binding up of broken hearts that Jesus went on to do. But for some reason, he misses that out. And instead, the, the scripture that he quotes and presumably the sermon that he goes on to preach seems to focus exclusively on freedom and grace. You have these three phrases that Jesus reads from Isaiah. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. And they are three separate sentences, but they sort of all roll into one because of the way that the Hebrew language works. The, um, if you compare what happens or what you read in Isaiah and elsewhere in the Psalms as well, you recognise that there is this, um, this convention of bringing together the idea of a prisoner with somebody who is blind. I'll tell you what I mean. 
if you read in um, Psalm 146 verses 7 and 8, you read, the Lord sets prisoners free, the Lord gives sight to the blind, as if they are one and the same thing, two facets of the same. And that's in part because uh, I guess if a dungeon or a prison is a dark place, then those who sit in darkness are in a sense blind because they can't see, they're imprisoned. Equally, those who are blind are imprisoned in their blindness. They are not at liberty to move about freely, to, 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 to be able to see and perceive and to move about in the world as others. So this is a sense of restriction, loss of liberty and loss of sight. Add into the mix the idea that comes out in Jesus' teaching that sight is linked to insight, to spiritual awareness. And then we get a whole nother layer, don't we, of this freedom that he is proclaiming, that those who are physically bound up, perhaps, physically afflicted with, um, with loss of sight, but also spiritually, those who are blinded, who can't see the freedom that God offers, who haven't experienced the grace of God in their lives, that those people who are blind in some way to what God is doing, they will also be made free. They'll be made whole. They'll, they'll have sight to move into freedom. And so there is a great message of freedom here for all people. Uh, and Jesus focuses on that particularly. Now, I said that uh, at the end, he finishes his, his reading at this point. He says that he has been sent to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Full stop. Isaiah goes on to say, and the day of the vengeance of the Lord. But at this point, Jesus is saying, I have come now, as he says in John's Gospel, I have come not to condemn the world, but... And his whole life is about grace and freedom. Yes, the day of judgment will come. And we need to be ready for that. But the year of God's favour is this period that we're living in now, where we're awaiting judgment and justice, when God will put things right. But in the meantime, we're living in this year of favour, where Jesus himself, his life, his death, his ministry, his resurrection, has pressed that reset button that is the jubilee, the year of favour of the Lord, when all things, all people are restored to their homeland and to their home families. Those that have had to sell themselves into slavery are released. Those that are indebted, they're forgiven their debts. The, there's a reset button that is pressed in the year of jubilee. And I wonder if Jesus is saying, because I'm here, that reset button is now pressed, that all of you, can know what it is to return to the place that God has for you in his kingdom. All of you can know that restoration to his family because God is going to make a way through me. He says these startling words as he sits down to begin to preach. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Those were bold words. And I challenge you to look into the life of Jesus and see, does he live up to what he says he's about? And if so, then the, the, the spirit of the sovereign Lord surely is at work in him. And if you're sitting in darkness, if you are oppressed, if you are feeling imprisoned in any way, then hear these words of grace of Jesus as he says, I have come to proclaim your freedom. And he says, this is fulfilled in me. So I know that you're going to go on and, and ponder this as a church together, but this message of freedom and grace is one that Jesus invites all of us to hear, and it surely will be good news to the poor, those of us who are poor in spirit, as well as those of us who are poor because of our circumstances, um, that there is freedom, there is good news, and it, it all resides in this person of Jesus. This speech wasn't just empty hopes and aspirations, but was opening people's eyes to who Jesus is and still is today. And this is the Jesus we have to share. This is the good news that we have to share with those around us who continue perhaps to sit in darkness, to perhaps to be imprisoned, held captive by 
mistakes of the past, by choices they've made, by whatever it is, Jesus speaks freedom. He proclaims freedom and grace. And may that be our song this week as we go about our daily lives and we're maybe out and about a little bit or we're picking up the phone and chatting to people. May we be also those who are sent to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom and, and life into people's lives. So may you know that as you go about your week and may you be blessed. A really big thank you to Eleanor for sharing with us. We pray blessings on you and your family and the fellowship at Chudley too. We're coming towards the end of our time together this evening. We're going to sing together, Hear the Call of the Kingdom. about it from us this evening. Thanks for joining us, thanks for being with us as we prayed and worshipped together. We hope that you, like we, are willing to put your faith in Jesus for the week ahead. Not just to know that he's there, but to walk with him and ask him to inhabit all of who you are by his spirit. That you would know his goodness, that you would know his strength as you face the days to come. Let's say together words that we find in Paul's letter uh, to Corinthians uh, that we know of as the grace, the words coming up on the screen just about now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So have a good evening and have a good week and we look forward to you joining us again next week. And for those of you who are a regular part of WBC, keep your eyes open and your Zoom links ready as we gather throughout the week as well. Take care, God bless and good night.
seek and save the lost and exchange the joy of heaven for the anguish of a cross with a prayer
You open horizons in my life Of limitless and cloudless hope You defy the gravity in me And give wings to my flightlessness So oh, Christ has set me free From negativity from impossibility, oh, Christ has set me free. All hope has been released, oh, Christ has set me free. You have taught my future how to shine. All the colors of eternity